Hello, welcome to this video, ladies and gentlemen. This is your fellow Nigerian once again. Breaking news, folks. Breaking news. Let's break it and see what this man has to say. As you can see right here, explosive. Lagos is not Yoruba land, says Obal of Lagos, Oba Akiolu. I, I really thank God that this thing is coming out. You see, before I would go further, there are a lot of things I would like to show you here. And uh, let's see what this man has to say. But I want to say this. Because of recent, actually, uh, you know, talk about uh, what is going on in Nigeria. When you look at this title right here, Benin City, the mighty Medjuva capital, now lost without trace. Um, you can listen to it by yourself. This one was done. Uh, that was January. Okay. Because everybody actually knew what this man had to say right now. It's not a revelation per se, but I call it revelations because it's coming out for him direct. They never want to admit this. But I think he's coming out now trying to resuscitate that important history of my kind, of the black people. You know, very important history that has been buried because of nepotism that is, you know, you are seen everywhere in Nigeria today. I, I talk about, in, in that very video, I talk about how the majorities today in Nigeria are rewriting their, their, their history, backdating them in order to prove that their history is older than anyone else. I mean, in Nigeria, for God's sake, you have great tribes from minorities. You talk about Bini Kingdom, the Edo people, you talk about the Edoma people, you talk about the Urubu people, the Calabars. All these people have a lot of strong history behind them. But because of what is going on today, where nepotism is so visible everywhere you look at today in Nigeria. So they try to oppress the rest in order for them to elevate themselves. But we all knew this, like I said before. What this man is trying to say today. We, we, we all knew this. That is why in that my last video, I talk about how the Bini Empire was so powerful that they have to name that city called Lagos today, Echo. There's no way if Oba or Bini didn't have influence up to that shore, there's no way he would have named that place a code. So we are going to hear from this man right now and what he had to say about that. And like I said before, they never wanted to say this. They've been suppressing the history of a particular people just because they are minorities. That is why today you go to Nigeria, boulevards and great infrastructures are named after the majorities as if they are more intelligent as if they have done more but that is what is going on with black people the white people are not like that you see grace was admitting to the european you know because of who they were very important history about greens i think was the first place you know in the bible where lawyer was first mentioned and the bible talk about how the greek seek after wisdom in Athens there when the other Europeans were still living in the cave, they never even know how to organize themselves. The Greek people were already coming together, exchanging ideas. As a matter of fact, uh, Olympic actually came from there. So they, 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 they started organizing themselves already. Uh, of course, um, the whole thing started from Egypt, Alexandra. And uh, when you look at that pyramid, Anyone that arrives there will pay homage to the people that are there today, even though they might not be the original uh, builders or the descendants of the builders of those pyramids. But as long as that pyramid is there where those people are today, people, whenever they arrive there, they look at these people as important people, as mysterious people. How many black people can actually, you know, we just go to the uh, ticket office and buy themselves ticket and go to Egypt? To see the pyramids. Not many. Because they don't understand the importance of building. Of history. So that is why in Nigeria you see the majorities try to suppress. The important history of others. 
by their influence today in the political arena in Nigeria. They use that. That is why I say when you go to the Nigerian Wikipedia, you will never see anything that is factual there. Everything there are all made up. Everything there are all fake and fraud. Every major tribes there try to backdate their history. Even though when you go to every European you know, museum from Berlin to Paris, Paris to Lisbon, Lisbon to London, you are not going to see any single document that talk about how they arrived in Nigeria and they meant building some organized society, organized empire, other than what they have written about Bini Empire. They talk about, a Portuguese man talk about how they arrived in Bini there, you know, they, they saw architectural work, bronze work, much more advanced even than the, uh, the you know, the European types. They talk about how everything were, were arranged there. When you listen to this, if you want to go back to it and listen to it, there are a lot of messages there and videos. Okay? I'm, I'm so oh, sorry right here. Let me pause it. There are, there, there are a lot of things here you can learn. How the Portuguese arrived there and what they saw and what they have written about the Benin Kingdom or the Benin Empire. The houses were already being erected there. There's no other tribe in Nigeria. They have written about the way they've done about the Benin Empire. So now, this man is coming out right now to say, look, you know, Lagos, a core, is not a Yoruba land. Because we know of recent, he was having some quarrels with the uh, owner of FIFA. Now, we don't know what's going on between them. I mean, the relationship between two of them has been cranky. So, uh, he coming out now to say, look, you don't have to come here to control me. You are under me as I am under the Benin Empire because my parents came from Benin. I mean, we are going to read further uh, as I stroke down. Uh, let's listen to what this man had to say. That Lagos, like I said before in my previous audio, that there is no way above Benin could have influence to name that place or whether he saw according to what this man is going to say that it was the son prince ado that actually named that place echo so but there was tremendous influence because if your son named a place the father had much more influence than his son all the way to the shore of lagos that the party jews when they arrived in that territory there was no president then there was no country so the party Jews, when they arrived from the shore of Lagos, they probably asked people there, or asked the man, the man, the all by there, who came from Benin, according to what this man is going to say here. Who is in charge here? He says, it's my father. Where is the seat of power? So they took them. They took the party Jews down to the Benin uh, kingdom, right there in Benin city, to the Oba Palace. And they came there to pay homage. So they have a lot of documentation that they have done concerning what they saw there. Great building, great architectural work. Nothing like that was written about any other tribes in Nigeria. Okay? Go to every museum all over the world. You see, I talk about even the bead. Uh, uh, it's not this type of bead. I think this is okay. This is a little bit rand. But people going around, walking around, organizing their traditional marriages, wearing the Bini bead. If you are not from Isha, if you are not from Bini, if you are not from even, uh, you know, the Urubo people, all the way to where good Lord Jonathan came from, you don't have right to wear bead, organizing your traditional marriage. Because you are telling people that's who you are, even though that's not who you are. That's why I love what, uh, you know, Buhari's daughter have done. During her marriage with, with, with another guy there of recent, she wore those traditional Fulani, you know, costume. She never go around trying to say, This is who I am, wearing beads, even though that is not who she is. Only a fool can be messing around like that. Okay? So we are going to hear what this man has to say here. Because even though we all know this, okay? But like I said before, if he was not having some crimes now with the owner of Ife, 
I don't think he will have come out to say this. So let's see what he have to say here. I would like to stroke down. Let, let's actually hear from him. Because we see now, you know, that dog life is coming to the thrones of Obas and, and the chiefs in Nigeria today. They, they are almost like the Nigerian politicians. And uh, Odeon Fifed is destroying people's house and claiming their lands. Uh, probably that is what uh, infuriated this man. You know, that he showed him the other day, and uh, Odeon Fifed arrived home and said, I'm going to send you something, uh, turn down to whatever. And uh, I think uh, there was fire in his house. The, what I was seeing yesterday, I don't know. But hey, I digress. Let's move on here. Uh, let's see what he had to say. Coming from the palace with what I was told by my late paternal mother, who is a descendant of Oba Ovorawe Nobasi. Also reading from the factual historical book. Okay. It's now you know. Let me share this knowledge with you all on a co Lagos. Modern day Lagos was founded by Prince Ado, the son of Oba of Benin. Prince Ado was the first Oba of Lagos. Right here. The son of Benin King, Prince Ado, named the town Eko until the Portuguese explorer Rui de Sequera changed Maritime Town to Lagos, which at that time from 1942 was Portuguese expedition center down to African coast. It was a major center for the slave trade until 1851. Lagos was annexed by Britain via the Lagos Treaty of Session in 1861, ending the consular period, starting the British colonial period. The remainder of modern day Nigeria was seized in 1886 when the colony and protectorate of Nigeria were established in 1941. Lagos was declared its capital due to the struggle. Of being a king, I, I don't know why I call it king. Is it king? Okay, let's move on here. Lagos experienced growth prior to the British colonial rule, and even more rapid growing during the colonial rule throughout the 1960s up to 70s. Continuing through the 80s and 90s to date, thanks to the Awori Benins, Yorubas, migrants across the nation and the world at large. As no particular group of people can take the glory alone. You see, that is what I have been saying. Lagos is no man's land. You have the Chinese. You have everyone from all over the world who arrive in Lagos and build that place. So, but when you see the governorship candidates now, they have to be Yorubas. Their ministers and his cabinets have to be Yorubas. You see? But... Even though this man is coming out and saying, look, that place is not actually belong to Yorubas. Okay? You see, that is the tribal influence and the nepotism that has ruined Nigeria that you are seeing there. I mean, as you can see now, we are hearing from the upper direct saying that no particular group of people can take the glory, even though the first upper of Lagos was from Benin, was the son of the king of Benin, according to what he said here. But I've told his story with the Oba, like he said here, modern day Lagos was founded by Prince Ado, the son of the Oba of Benin. But here they're talking about king. I don't know whether they even know the difference between king and Oba. Okay? Uh, because I read something here talking about uh, declare the capital due to the struggle of Benin king. So I don't understand that. I think he was talking about the Oba of Benin. Lagos is made up of lagoons and creeks. The Lagos Lagoon, Lagos Harbor, five known creeks, Ebute Meta creeks. Port Novo Creeks, New Canaan, Badagri Creeks, Kuramo Water and Lighthouse Creeks. The Awori and Benins are known to be the first settler of the Eko land. The Awaris are speakers of distinct dialect close to that of Yoruba language with a rich Benin mixture. Traditionally, Awaris were found in Ileife. They were known to be the Benins who followed their self as a prince. The first son of Ojiso now called Oba of the Bini Kingdom, whose stepmother was after his head. The exact Bini prince is Odua, known to the Yorubas as Odua, Odudua, was made the ruler of the Ife people due to his powers and follow up from the great Bini Kingdom. 
Isodua, which is Odua, was made the first king of Ilefe in 1230 AD. His followers from his father's kingdom in Benin are the today's Awari people who settled in a code now called Lagos. There are a lot of things you, I, I don't want to go further, but what this man is trying to say here, you can read it the rest by yourself, you can Google it. Do you know? I mean, there are a lot of factual stories here that has been suppressed. That were hidden in the dark. Do you know? If he didn't have problem with only of effect, all this thing would have come out. Okay? But the bottom line is that. You can read the whole thing. It's very complex. Okay? The bottom line is that. The final of that place. As you know, a code is a Bili language. The first Oba there actually came from Benin. Uh, the man went down to say that, uh, you know, there's something I want to show you here. He said, the Oba of Benin was head of the Benin Empire, which are present-day western, southern, and eastern modern-day Nigeria. The king never obliged anyone to speak the Benin language, as he believed everyone was entitled to their own choice of language. So right here, about 1450 AD, some Yorubas, you know, Yoruba has never been mentioned before. We talk about the Awori people, we talk about the Benin people. Now, some Yorubas in 1450 who hail from Esheri in Ogun, which Ogun state and Ekiti were allowed by the king to settle in Eko during a war. They came in very large number, thereby surpassing the numbers of Awori and the Benins. Hence, Yoruba claimed to owe Eko due to their numbers. This is what I'll be saying. This man is just telling the truth now. Numbers can't in Nigeria. Not history, not facts. As long as you are majorities, you are better than anyone else. But that is why you see things are not working in Nigeria. You come to Western world. You see uh, minorities. You go to Germany, you see the Bayan people, they are minorities. You know, Mr. Obama wouldn't have been a president in Nigeria. No minority would be voted for to rule Nigeria. You know, Good Lord Jonathan was so lucky that uh, his boss died. He have to, he have to take over the office. But that is the problem Nigeria have. There are a lot of things I would like to show you here as we go further. Right here, as you can see right here, Oba Akintoye. You know, I don't know how you arrive here, but I don't want to because it's, it's a lot of uh, you know things that you need to read here. But however, Oba Akintoye of Lagos was the first Oba not to be buried in Benin. Prior to this, all the kings of Lagos, which is all the Oba of, of Lagos. I mean, I don't know who is writing this. He's talking about Oba, he's talking about kings. Kings and Oba is different. You don't translate Oba to be kings. They are not kings, okay? Prior to this, all the kings, which is all the Obas, were buried in Benin. All the Obas in Lagos, whenever they die. They pass on taxes to the Oba of Benin until the British settle in Lagos. That's what I was saying before. They all had to pay homage to their grandfather there in Benin Kingdom. Until today, the Oba of Lagos is the head of all the Obas in Lagos. Because of the Benin belief that whatever they or their offspring are, they are seniors. The statue of the Oba of Lagos is different from other Obas, most of whom were given back their crimes and staff of office only within 40 years ago. Not so long ago. Those who got their lands back was the original landowners, and they were mostly descendants of Prince Ado and other children of Olofin. So uh, we, we see the whole thing here, okay? Uh, like what this man said, the power of Oba was stretched all the way to the southern area. Uh, let me show you something here, like what we read here before, that the Oba Bini was the head of the Bini Empire, which are present day Western southern eastern modern day nigeria okay the oba never obliged anyone to speak Bini language he allowed people to speak that language and um, that actually show up when you look at where you know during our you know our generation what we have meant where oba was still controlling the the bende uh, territory uh, you can see that uh Urubu was still speaking the language and everything even though he was the one have to uh, install those kings there I think this might say the truth. And uh, this is what I want to talk about. Thank you very much for listening, for watching this. Uh, 
it's good that we have to bring out the truth all the time. The truth must be told.